Anyway, we got that going. Anyway, uh, we want to respect everyone's time. So thank you all so much for being here. Um, whether you're a new business or already part of the worker community, um, thank you for being here. Start a couple things off with introductions. Um, my name is Jasmine Cabrera. I am the business services coordinator at Heartland Workforce Solutions. A little bit about Heartland that receives the federal funds to promote workforce development in Douglas, South and Washington counties. Um, so as you can see in your pamphlet, um, we partner with a lot of um, um, to help promote that uh, for their job seeking. Um, there is a QR code on the back side. Of um, if you are not already registered, um, it's just a quick, quick link. You can scan that code. Um, it will take you through a registration link where you can your needs as a business. So whether it's you need access to job fairs, send out monthly. Um, All free of charge because we are a nonprofit organization. Um, with that, I will pass it over to my co host uh, who helped put on all of this for you guys, Gloria. Thank you, Jasmine. Oh, thank you. Thank you. This is Gloria Harwell. I'm the manager of business development training and outreach here at Metropolitan Community College, specifically in the Workforce Innovation Division. It's a long title. It basically means I am the go between between the students that are involved in our training programs and the businesses in the community. I connect those businesses to the students in the training programs. They can come in, come to career fairs, visit the classes, recruit, and so forth. So I'm the, the liaison for that. So glad that everybody is here. Uh, in your folder on the left side, you'll see some information about who we are as a workforce innovation division. You'll also see some of the uh, Training programs we offer, fiber optics, vet assistant, pharmacy tech, Lean Six Sigma, project management, and so forth. So if there's a particular training program that involves your industry and you'd like to talk to me about, say, hey, Gloria, I would like to be able to visit that class in my industry to recruit. So you have my business card there on the left side of the folder as well with my contact information. And I'll be happy to get you engaged as the business engagement manager with our training programs. You also see a copy of what's called our career placement program, the white sheet uh, there. And the workforce uh, division, we have career coaches uh, and those particular individuals are in place to work with the students in our training program. The very first week of every training program we offer in the workforce division is the career placement program. And what that means is we, uh, work with students on basic computer skills and get a certification in that. We work with them on customer service training. They get certified in that after they finish it. There's also the National Career Readiness Certification, uh, which is a part of ACT, Work Ready Communities, and Tammy will go a little bit more uh, in depth with that. But they also get that assessment. And that assessment uh, tests them in three areas, uh, applied mathematics, uh, workforce documents, and graphing. Documents and after they take that national career ready uh, this sort of, uh, assessment, uh, it tells them basically what job they'll be a good fit at. Oh, this student has done that certification, they've been assessed, and they'll be good in accounting, they'll be good in nursing skills, they'll be good in resources. So that's good for businesses to know about. So, also with the career placement program, our career coaches. Don't leave the students once you hire them to your businesses, hopefully, but they're in place to follow up with our students for six months after they're placed on the job. You know, say, hey, how's it going? Do you need more help with sort of skills? Do you need help with this? How are your, how are your soft skills? How are you dealing with your coworkers, with your boss? Because the soft skills are very important. Uh, in the career placement program, we offer what's called Bring Your A Game. And this is just soft skills like that uh, people need to learn about, like attitude is important, keeping the job, attendance, appearance, things that those of us of a certain age take for granted, 
but a lot, especially in uh, uh, younger uh, generations, they say we not have that, especially not having job experience. So that takes place in the career placement program too. So that's just a little bit of information about what we do here in the workforce division and my role in connecting the businesses to those students in the training program. So now that we've introduced ourselves, we'd like to learn more about who's in the room. Uh, we're gonna start off, and I know uh, most of you are finished eating. I'll start on this side uh, as he drinks his uh, Coca-Cola. I just uh, remember. First Dr. Uh, Pepper in 22 years. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> Soda anymore, but for today, I'll do it. <laughs> Just so you know, we do have one. We want you to go off the way. <laughs> 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 there is water in the back. Uh, uh, good. Well, so, uh, my name is Debbie Manimo. I'm a college recruiter here at NC. Um, my job involves doing more outreach to reach out to the to try and get people to know what MCC offers in terms of programs, um, classical certificate programs, and just everything we can do to help them get started. Um, so if you have anyone who within your business who you want to maybe um, better up their skills or finish any courses and classes they may have started and stopped. I am the person to talk to. I'll be very happy to come and engage with your staff and the employees. Just help them get started and help them with anything they need to complete. Any certifications, any classes they need to get started, or anything they need to do. Yeah. Yeah, I'm Greg Waltz, Power, uh, the Operations Manager for Manpower. Um, well, what we do is similar to you in a way, but not quite. Um, temp time. So we're a staffing agency. We work with a bunch of clients. Uh, we like to work with all you staff. So we're working with us, then we can take on some out for us for maybe six, seven months, see if they are a good candidate, and then you hire them on purpose. And that's our goal for people. Find those clients, those jobs they want, send them out to the station. They show you guys that they're a great employee, uh, that you want to hire them on, hire them on permanently. We don't want to work with them. Help them out and find those jobs that they're going to want to stay at. That's our goal uh, for today. Um, and Manpower t shirt on, and I'm part of November, so day three. So, uh, growing out my beard for November uh, because personally, my wife just went through breast cancer and it's breast cancer spider now. And I know November goes more about men's cancer, so. In the community, so I get the opportunity to work with Gloria a lot, um, and she's been so helpful. I also work with a lot of other regional like, colleges and universities, um, workforce development programs, like Portland Workforce Solutions. Um, but I have to say, probably one of my favorites is working with our youth and with um, youth nonprofits from this kind of uh, goes towards like career awareness or um, our high schools and middle schools as well. It's funny, um, as far as career awareness. I kind of got drawn the line like, okay, let's work on middle school and that'll be great. We're actually working with the Children's Museum to do a career. Two to six year olds um, is where they want to like start planting seeds. And so I said, yeah, all right, that's fun. So um, anyway, it's fun. And working with those kiddos is amazing. Uh, my name is Jim Longman with the Army Air Force Exchange. Uh, we provide retail services for Army and Airmen uh, throughout. You know, obviously, you're off there, which makes way. Uh, when Super Bowls, so he's worldwide. So, uh, <laughs> join up with us, you know, obviously, we're the first question is all over the world. To uh, work for, I think, say we have about seven years, so we mm -hmm. Uh, 
Yeah. Rachel Hypo with Wasi. Um, just have been in recruiting for less than a year now. Had no idea of the struggle that would be. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was going to sit back and interview people, and that was going to be Definitely finding and sourcing and networking is a huge role job. So just trying to get acclimated in that. So uh, my name is uh, I'm with Dvornik. Uh, we are a German company based in Sim, and we have a plant here in Blair Nebraska. So that's in, I'm just one of our farm. We are business to business uh, company. So that's uh, even the struggle that we, like, everyone has to hire and retain even harder right now. Site, this is maintenance and engineering projects. And I do have positions open for clients, uh, which we are not able to hire. Locally, we don't have uh, I can count, uh that technicians are engineering available in the market. So I'm here kind of to expand my network, uh, trying to see how we can get uh, to know other companies and people know us, uh, so we can try to improve that piece. Let's see this is my colleague. So we recruit on both clinical and not clinical goals. Serviced in the white textile processing, um, chaplaincy, um, some administrative positions, and she has many uh, CMEs and student nurse techs. And um, the struggle has been real in recruitment. And so we are uh, networking as much as we can to the colleges to kind of try to create the right pathways from college into workforce. And so we're here to uh, work with the schools and create those kinds of pipelines. So, that's just like Haley Gorsuch, um, CNA, healthcare support tech, student nurse tech, patient companion, recruiter. Um, so, work with a lot of the young people, either at nursing school or right out of high school, getting their CNA license and certification. So, I've been recruiting for four years. Love it. My name is Rebecca Weitzel on the Edge Enterprises. Um, we also do business as on the Edge Signal. Security cameras, audio. Sales installation service. We work also as a subcontractor to a larger company here in town. We do regionally, uh, probably five, six states, um, and also this meeting. So we're um, venturing, trying to venture out to listen to that and assist other companies that don't want to hire. Um, or that just doesn't seem feasible. So we have worked with Metro before. So we have a couple through their department workforce initiatives right here. I'm good for us as well. So I'm refreshing and seeing what's new. You also have the act. Uh, so I have a few that have come through that, but I have a few I'd like to send your way for that um, and for the readiness, etc. So I'm seeing who's here, who's in the pool. And I always look for people that we can help. There's plenty of work to do. So I um, I like to hear what everyone's doing. And if that's good, but I still like to know who you are and if we're just doing anyone that's here, I think it's uh, in my opinion, searching in the right places. So thank you. My name is Shannon Bernant, and I work for Airlift Plastics, which is down the road of the ways. On a position partner or senior recruiter. Um, I think that uh, we've been partnering with Metro for quite some time, and uh, with apprenticeship programs, we have employees that are in some.
skilled labor as a plant. Um, I work for Air Lake Plastics here in Omaha for skilled labor and professionals. Um, so I am working with and trying to recruit for uh, maintenance mechanics is a big one, engineering, CNC machinists. Right now we're we're full, but that's another one that's hard to fill. Um, United States. Um, we have several other lines of business under the airline umbrella, and so um, I think my favorite part is just meeting the younger kids and sharing information about the jobs that are out there. Um, so with Airlight Plastics, I'm new to the Airlight team. Um, I'm the um, talent acquisition manager, and um, my role is, is not only connecting all of these lines of business that, that Shannon mentioned, they're all new to the organization since 2019. We've acquired six, five, five new lines of business um, since 2019. And so it's just, uh, my role is kind of bringing those all together um, under yes, and also strategic partnerships, like we had mentioned. Um, in the, so, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, hi, everybody. I'm Tammy Cruz. I'm with Mutual of Omaha. Um, I've been there almost 30 years. All 27 of it has been for probably the last 25. So um, I support all areas of the business. Um, Claims, customer service, um, our call center reps, um, IT marketing, um, sales positions. Um, we also hire nurses and um, facilities, maintenance, operating engineers, those types of functions as well. So um, I've been partners with Goodwill. I serve on their business advisory council for um, one of their programs and we have been to several events that have been for solutions this long. And HR at each bowl. So um, yeah, I truly love listening to everybody and what new things we can come up with to find talent, keep talent, retain talent, because the market has definitely shifted um, and it's a candidate market right now. So um, for as much as they um, are driving up salaries and wages, they're also asking for you know some of the other softer things that we sometimes don't always think about. Thank you. Hi, Butler. My specialty is uh, logistics and industrial automation. And, uh, Saying not only to get them, but to retain them, develop the accounts you have in yours. My focus is really in the area of bringing people in. You still got to find a way to keep people you got. So part of that is just done for customized training. Retraining existing staff, skilling existing staff. I want to yeah. just manage the controls for us, the Zoom and the chat. <laughs> I'm Derek. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a career readiness coordinator of Heart and Workforce Solutions. So um, I help connect uh, job seekers to various trainings. I'll get my credential, a license, something that will help connect them to that um, H train appointment. Just really briefly, um, I sort of asked um, Donnie Butler to be brief because we're going to go around the room, but I would be remiss if I did not um, expound on uh, his. Uh, experience. Donnie is our new facilitator. He is overseeing the um, industrial um, logistics and industrial automation class. It's a whole lab that we have forklift operations, OSHA 10, MSSC certification like uh, certified logistics and things like that. So uh, again, manufacturers, again, Metro has a workforce division. We have several of these to offer. Coming soon, I will say this, something new to our campus. And my understanding is the first educational uh, institution in the country. We're going to offer a class in mobile uh, phone repair mm -hmm. servicing, certification that. 
there is a whole facility that is built in building 10 on this campus called Digital Express. And inside there is Reboot Central. We're going to have boot camp training people to get certified in uh, phone repair services, mobile device repair, they, they like to say it. We're partnering with iFix Omaha in town, and Omaha, you may have heard of them. And that's going to be starting in winter of this year. We're very excited about that. The, uh, the people who designed the whole, uh, the, the study, uh, the training for us, the CTIA out of, off the East Coast, and we're going to use uh, their format and their information to get people trained right here in town on phone repairs. It's going to be uh, uh, exciting for a lot of people who have like five or six people in one family that own cell phones and things get broken. And yeah. like, send, send your teenager who likes technology to be certified to learn how to do that. He makes all the phones in the house now, the whole family. Yeah. But that's, that's something else that's new to come. So now, I want to get to the part we've all been waiting for. I want to introduce our speaker, Ms. Tammy Green. Before I do that, I'd like to brag on her just a little bit. Uh, I was teasing her in the hallway, told her I would tell everybody she's in the lab trying to stop the cure for cancer. But I think I'll leave that part out. <laughs> I didn't like to talk about it, but she's such a neat lady. Uh, Tammy's director of uh, workforce and IT innovation for career skills. She's over the person that's over the career placement program that's in your folder. She is also the director of the adult ed department here at Metro. So she's director of two different areas. I'm like, maybe that's a job I should aspire to. Is that mean she has two different paychecks? You know, it's like, hmm, let me think of my career plan here. No, but she said no. Uh, what's really good for us when it comes to ACT Work Ready Community, Tammy represented MCC uh, in uh, getting Work Ready Community established in Douglas County. So she's the person that you need to thank for us even having a Work Ready Community initiative in Douglas County. Let's give her a hand for that. She is super passionate about students. She is super passionate about uh, helping those that are underprivileged. Uh, to give them a step up, a boost up, to get training, so that they can go on to H3 level jobs, high skill, high demand, high wage, so they can support their family. She's very passionate about helping others. Uh, she's had over 20 years of uh, experience in education and administration. She is my boss, and like I said, a very neat lady, Miss Tammy Green. <laughs> really glad that Gloria said 20 years because if she said 30 years, then I think I might feel a little bit weird um, because um, then I start to feel a little bit on the older side um, because my kids are all grown. It, you know, one of the things about building a work-ready community is it is never, ever, ever done in a silo. So the reason why you have such a close connection between Heartland Workforce Solutions and Metropolitan Community College is quite frankly because education is a tool and a resource to have a community that is basically well-educated, can fill your positions, and not only can they fill the open positions, but they're actually qualified when they go into the positions. That's what it is. Um, today, we'll talk a little bit about um, pulling back some of the curtain to partnerships, why you're here, why you're so important to what we do, and then to understand that truly, when you're part of work-ready communities, especially part-time work-ready communities, really what it is is a strategic plan that connects all of us together so that we can start getting people into the jobs, we can get people into training programs, and we can start addressing skills gaps. And when you do that, then you can start to activate your workforce system. Um, why do you think that's important right now with our current workforce system? Talked about it earlier. You can't find people to fill your positions, let alone if you do find the people, finding qualified people is becoming a real struggle. Part of what um, the Work Ready Communities Initiative is, it is finding people, getting them trained, and then getting them into the programs that, um, that you guys are all have wide open waiting for people. 
is if you look at um, rebel life or revolutionizing the workforce ecosystem, when you think about that revolutionary approach to what we're doing, it's really activating the entire ecosystem. So that means at the table are businesses, educational institutions, MCC, UNO, all of it. AIM, all of those have to be activated because not only do you need people who are techs, call center folks, but you also need people who are moving into more advanced positions, engineering positions, like what Ivonic has right now. And a good shout out to Ivonic. They were actually one of our first business partners to actually require the National Career Readiness Certification when people get hired. And so we partnered with Ivonic to provide the National Career Readiness Certification. Um, and I'll tell you a little bit about what that means in just a second. One of the things that happened is that we work with high barriers to successful employment. So right now, if you're looking at your, your pool, those are typically going to be people that have been marginalized. Um, they're usually in low-wage jobs, um, English language learners. They may just now have gotten their high school equivalency, but that's all they have. Well, the great thing about that is when you connect education with folks, then all of a sudden they can be some of your best, workers, your best candidates. One of the things is we've got a 93% retention rate through this system and this ecosystem. Um, that's pretty significant when, when you're talking about working with high barrier populations. Um, and then um, MCC overall students are right now at 94% retention rate. So we got a good track record. Um, like I said earlier, none of this happens in, by itself. There was a lot of work on the front end that went into it and a lot of work that continues to go into it. So Heartland Workforce Solutions, one of the, um, the grants that is that actually supports this is the Career Readiness to Eliminate Disparities Grant. Um, and then there's a lot of other, there's an EDA lot of grants that come to provide the National Career Readiness um, certification free to you and free to your candidates. You don't have to pay for any of that. The other piece of that is the career placement program. Through all of the graded funding, you don't have to pay for that. So the career coaches that are involved, the instructors that are involved, the training programs that are involved, that pathway to work for you, with you, for you. Um, again, I really can't emphasize enough the partnerships. Another, another organization that we work with a lot is the K-12 public school systems. You are working with them as well. Um, so are we. Because it's important to identify students early on. And now apparently we're doing it when they're littles. <laughs> I think that will be really cute if we have a bunch of aprons and you know hats. And that would just be adorable. So um, the Greater Omaha Chamber, all of the businesses that come with that. Now, one of the things that's often asked of me is what makes up a high barrier, high barrier populations. Well, those are the folks that are in poverty. One of the things that's really unique about our community is that we are one, and this is no surprise to you guys, we're one of the hardest working communities in the nation. Nebraska is one of the hardest working places. We have the highest number of individuals who work multiple jobs in poverty. And so, and or if they're not in poverty, we would say they're not making livable wages. So we have to acknowledge that and help. And the reason why they're at the low, low wage jobs is because what we found out is with by partnering with you guys, we can identify jobs, your biggest open positions. We can start to develop a training program that meets your needs and work from there. So really, we kind of flip education on its head here at MCC and especially under Workforce Innovation Division. We start with the end in mind. We start with your positions. We start with your open positions. 
And then we work back from there um, because we have the training programs. The training programs are readily available. We just need to connect the students as they're going through the training programs to your open jobs. And we do that in several ways. One of those is by utilizing the ACT work keys system. So part of that is the National Career Readiness Certification. And that National Career Readiness Certification, what it does is it does two things for career coaches, but it also does something for you. So for our career coaches on the staff, when they're going through the career placement program, the reason we've got great retention with high barriers is because we understand skill sets and we align them with the jobs that you have available. We use a couple of resources. Our coaches use several resources to do that alignment. One of those we call a job skill alignment. And actually we Air Like Plastics was the first one that we did a, a lot of alignments with. Ebonic is another. So we've done a lot of job skill alignments. And what that does is that tells us what level of person needs to be at when they take the MCRC. The other piece about that that is so valuable is that we don't move a student on until they're ready to go with your positions. And what that does is that means that they're still employed with you six months later. And they're usually your high performers. That's what happens. And you all know what the cost of a rehire is. You know, I one of the things I love to do independently with business is I have a cost of a rehire calculator and, and it's eye-opening for some people to understand that when you don't when you don't have good alignment and you hire somebody, it costs a lot of money to replace them, especially if you've gotten through a few months of training with them or if it's a constant retraining. All of the resources, all of the money that goes into it is really costly. So by shoring this up, what we found is a lot of our business partners, if they're coming to the replacement program, are able to offer an increased wage because they know they're going to be there. And so we start moving that needle on retention, and we start moving that needle where you don't have the cost of a rehire, and it's not so costly because you're being overstated. What happens is, is that means that the business has more, more in their bottom line, which means more in the business's bottom line, but also helping the, the people who are working there. One of the things, I think there's a lot of words here that kind of explain the NCRC and what it does and how it improves the quality of a rehire, but I think the simplest way and the best way to explain it is that we do two things here. We evaluate a through 12, what grade level are you performing in math, in reading, science, social studies, all those kinds of things. What the NCRC does is take it one step further because it, what they do is they take a person's because academics are really rocket scientists without actually having what the NCRC does is it evaluates and it provides training mechanisms for a person to take their academics and apply that to the world of work. So that addresses skill gaps. I can't tell you how many times I've heard from business partners where they've said, I hey, you do all this training, and then they get to us, and we have another six, 12 months of training because they make it through your system, but then not work ready. So what happens in CRC actually shores that up. So basically, in simple terms, what it does is that, you know, in academics, you right? Now, what the NCRC evaluates is, okay, your job is asking you to bake a cake. You need three-fourths of a cup. You don't have three-fourths of a cup. Are you able to understand fractions enough that you can take a fourth of a cup three times and get three-fourths of a cup? That's what the NCRC evaluates. And the great thing about that is that's where our instructors and our coaches come in, is that we now have a lead-in approach and not a lead-out approach. So if somebody is not aligned where they need to be, or their skills are not, they need more retraining, or they need things that we need to address, that's okay. They're going to get out of the system because they didn't pass this exam. They're actually started at the right point. So then the coaches come in and they say, okay, 
You want to go into the field of IT. You want to go into the field of biomedicine. Great. Well, let's take a look at your academics. Let's take a look at your MCRC scores. Okay, are they on par for what you're going to need to go into the job, or are they too low? Because if they're too low, then our career coaches and our instructors work with the students to get them up to speed and address that skills gap that you're going to see. Where in old traditional educational metrics, what they would have done is said, ah, they finished. Here you go. Right now, what our coaches do is say, yes, you finished. Now let's do one more step to make sure that you're ready. And if you're not, and that's really what the MCRC does. So there's two ways for ready communities. When you're up to be a partner with this workforce ecosystem, when you're signing up, you can acknowledge it, which means that if somebody's coming through and it's on their resume, you acknowledge it and you can say, I know what that is. And I will recognize that when it comes time for me to make selection and hiring processes. The other way that you can do it is require it. So we do have some businesses hire the NCRC because we've done a job skill alignment. So we know what level proficiency they need to be at. Talked a lot about the coaching. Coaching is a big component of what we do. What we do is really focus on making sure that we have a person and we can move them easily, efficiently, and quickly into training programs by utilizing not only technical education, but also by embedding services around so that you have a qualified candidate and so that we are preparing students to go into your jobs. It's a win-win all the way around. One of the things we do, you've heard, you may have heard a lot about this, is the career placement program. Well, the career placement program, what that does is it really focuses on on really four things. It focuses on first, um, understanding what your needs are, what are your open reps, what are your positions that you're looking to fill. Program is what you need to fill that position, whether that be, you know, the whole gamut. Um, one thing that we have done is make sure that there's a pathway through into every single industry. That is a really important thing because what's so different about our partnership with Rightland Workforce Solutions and part of this ecosystem is, is that we don't have one pathway for people, right? That's important because a lot of times, you know, not everybody wants to be a nurse, not everybody wants to go with a CNA, not everybody wants to be on the call center, not everybody wants to be a maintenance mechanic, not everybody wants to drive a CDL truck. Right? So the more we try forcing people into positions they don't really want to do, um, actually, it is worse for you guys. Um, the other component is a, yeah, that is the career coaches. They'll work with you and our business engagement managers. So what they do is they work with you. They understand what your job reps are, what your open positions are. You get an opportunity to come in and meet the students. Um, because the great thing about meeting the students before it comes to an interview is you get to have, first of all, you get to meet your candidates. Second of all, the candidates get a chance to ask you questions that they could never ask you in an interview, right? And so you get a chance to actually show off your business. You get a chance to tell them why they should come to work for you. Where a lot of times, if it's just applying for a job, they don't get that opportunity. And if you really want to know who to contact, you can know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, any questions? Starting with Airway, we were really working with you guys. And we would have students come in, I think on Fridays, and they would do an interview. And then if the interview went well, we would hire them. Mm -hmm. And the last time I connected with someone, you had a schedule 
and different types of classes you are doing now. So do you do maintenance mechanic or a CNC machinist? And will I still reach out to Gloria here or will we go to the other salvo? Well, Gloria is a perfect person to reach out to because here's the great thing about NCC. We have a tiered approach. So Gloria can get you connected to that. So we start with your very basic, like for example, NIT. We'll start with very basic, basic IT information. Then we move on to the information, um, the intro to information technology cert. And then we move into it same pathway um, into all of the industry. Are they assigned classes now? I think it's changed a little bit since we initially worked with the packers and one other position. It really hasn't changed a whole lot. Um, it depend, It really hasn't, except there are a couple of elements that are really, really uh, good for you. Partner. One of those is called a sponsorship. So the way sponsorships work is that um, in partnership with MCC, um, you have an opportunity to either your current workers or new workers to the field, um, those individuals can go through a sponsorship. And basically what happens is looking for um, degree earners um, or uh, credit certification programs. Uh, we do a cost sharing for the cost of the program. And then the idea is rather than waiting for them to get done. And then because it's a cost share, the, um, the typical idea is that you're paying their way or we do a share where MCC and you, um, us through a grant and you through their regular employment get paid while they're doing the, the education and they're also working with you for basically on the job training. And then at the conclusion of the program, they're completely done. Um, that seems to be one of the neatest programs because you don't have to wait for the students to be done. You can hire them on the front end if they're not already your workers. So basically, think about it this way. Those positions, here's where I've seen it, actually all the way I've seen it be effective. But when I've really seen it revolutionize jobs is um, for those hard to fill positions because maintenance mechanics, those kinds of positions, IT help desk positions, those positions are really hard to fill. Um, nurse a lot of those positions. And what happens is, is that you put out, what happens is the business partner puts out a, um, basically a call for people to come and work for them. And then they actually typically say, we want you to apply for this job. We will train you to do this position. So for maintenance mechanics, how we've seen it work is, it's a year long program but they couldn't fill it before, especially with all of the folks that have retired from those positions. And so individuals are employed, um, and they are working on the job. They get one day every week. Still pay them their wage, but it's at a lesser amount. So when you first start the program, they're at $17 an hour. And also the business partner pays a portion of their education. As they start to progress through the program and complete certifications, then they get wage bumps. And then by the time that program is done, you have a fully educated individual who work for you and also believe they're not very, very invested and you cared about their education. And, and so they don't, they don't. The retention at that business is, is not even a, a conversation anymore because the candidates are so um, a big part. Heartland Workforce Solutions has on the job training options that look very much like this. Um, so that partnership is really, really important. So, yes, it looks different, um, but it still has the same goal, the same purpose. But now we've really tiered our education. Where before it was candidates, we would do screening, we'd 
prep them for their work readiness. And we move well, now we've added another layer where we do the preparations, but now we also really focus on that technical education as well. Are ready. And we're taking people who wouldn't normally make it through your hiring and your screening process. We're now taking those individuals so that they can capture screening process because they're trained. Um, if there's programs that aren't necessarily in existence with you guys yet, mm -hmm. are you able to work with us to say okay, absolutely, absolutely for those who are not already employed, but for okay. yeah, absolutely, and even those that are employed. So we've got both. So sure. a, there's a whole training program that can be developed for those that aren't employed, and then there's also upscaling if you want sure. to do that within your. That has been for some organizations, uh, if they use both strategies, same programs, but both strategies, mm -hmm. they really like that option. Because what happens is, is that now you have people who are wanting to upskill, and then they, they can upskill, and they're currently in your, they're already with children's. Um, I'm actually starting a program uh, with you guys for our English language learners. Yeah. So that kicks off in January. And so the idea with that is that we, we identify, but we start scaling people up into those. And boundary limitations. So for instance, Iowa, Nebraska have to be specific to it's a good question, and it and what I will say is um, there's a yes and no to that. It depends upon the program and the services that you're wanting, but we do work with businesses in Iowa, and we do work with businesses, of course, here in the Greater Omaha area, and Fremont, and Blair, um, and in the surrounding service area. Um, what does limit us sometimes is if it is the type of training that you're wanting. So, an example of this would be um, English language programs. Um, we have a business partner in Iowa who has an English language program. Well, our program is a federally um, supported English language program, and Iowa Western has that as well. So what we'll do is we'll partner with Iowa Western, and then we'll talk about the other training programs that we have. So there are sometimes boundaries depending upon the funding source, but that's only if we additional scholarships and funding, but we work, we work through that. And partner with Iowa Western is if it's a program that um, is like uh, federally funded or supported and, and things like that, that they can stay within their boundaries, the state boundaries, then we just. Um, so, like, for example, you have work ethics certification. I was just thinking this a lot, but you know, by the way. So for some employees that we currently have or the certificates, how do we equip them? A great starting point or Jasmine is a great starting point. Again, it's a partnership. So the work ethics certification or the written or aging, that is a partnership as part of the work ready communities. All of our partners actually do use the work, um, the work ethic or bring your aging. You'll hear that a lot too. Uh, urbanly, Goodwill, Heartland Workforce Solutions, all of us use that system and partner. Um, in fact, Heartland Workforce Solutions trains most of the folks in work ethic. It can be taught. And let me tell you what we found is in our ecosystem. Um, now, I'll probably do my dissertation on this. Um, what we have found is that when you don't have a good candidate, right, that shows up for, for work, right? And a lot of times what we're finding is that it's a misalignment with their skill sets and those behaviors are amplified because they don't wanna tell their boss, they don't know how to do the job. A lot of times we find that they don't wanna do that so then they disengage. So they'd rather have you fire them than for them to have to tell you that they're not qualified for the job you just hired them for. 
probably a lot more than somebody just being obstinate and saying, yeah, I want to wear my fuzzy slippers and I know you need. So, um, most of the people, 87% of the candidates we work with are, are moving into employment. And of those 94% of them are still employed. So how are you going to find that, that their skill set is not matching, not aligning? That's the NCRC. That's where the National Career Readiness Certification comes in. And the NCRC connects to ONET. So what we can do is look at ONET. Even if we haven't done a job skill alignment yet, we can connect with ONET and have a rough understanding of what we're doing. That candidate needs to be at in proficiency in order to fit into that job. And the other thing is we teach it. My Heartland Workforce Solutions has developed entire training programs to basically teach anybody who wants to learn um, how to uh, do work ethic and teach work ethic um, right very fast so that when we come back, we can teach it. We can teach students or individuals, sorry, your candidates, your career seekers, our students, to us every um, we can teach those students how to communicate with each other, how to work with each other. Um, you know, dressing for success, showing up for work on time, those kinds of things. Um, and even sometimes it's having those uh, conversations about, um, oh, is the job the right fit for you? So if you can't stand on your feet for 12 to 14 hours a day, requires that is that a good fit so rather than moving a person into the job before they ever get there and then they're going oh no or oh i can't have my cell phone with me all day i can't just sit and text all day those are things you can yes we are having a bring your a game um so i can send that information out to all of you in case you're we um, interested in that as free. Um, so we're just trying to get everyone registered here for that. I could go into businesses and make those kinds of things. Um, I'm not sure. Um, and I can get back to you on that. But I, I, we do everything. So I assume you do. But I, I'll, I'll double check this out. Thank you. I can uh, thank you all for being part of the ecosystem because honestly, it is an ecosystem. Without businesses, you can train an army, and if nobody has a job to go into, it's not a good workforce system. And all of us have to work together so that we can get so basically we can revolutionize our economy and our workforce system. So thank you. Well, thank you so much, Tammy. That was a great presentation. A lot of good information. You guys have a really good question. Another round of applause. With that being said, I know Tammy went into it a little bit, um, and I'm sure you received an email this morning if you are already a um, Work Ready community member. Um, so we would, if you already are a member, um, if you could that email that I sent earlier um, and follow the prompt. It'll just have you go in from, and we can explain a little bit, but um, if you're ready, if you are a brand new business and are interested in becoming a work ready community um, employer, you can scan the QR code and it'll just have you register your business, typical questions, point of contact, business, email, all that good stuff. Um, so this is a little bit about moving from recognize the reason why we give this option for you to go from recognize as a work ready community business member to recommend is that it uh, helps us increase our community. Uh, I put you here from Tammy. If you're already a member and you some new side of work ready communities being involved and engaged. We would love for you to move from uh, 
recognized or recommended to others. So that's what you can do. Raise your hand if you saw that email before you came here today. Okay, well, that's good. So you see it. And others, you can see when you get back to computers or if you have on your phone, you can access it there. But, but we greatly uh, would appreciate if you do that. Yeah, we'll send out all this information as well after. Um, but these are kind of the prompts that you'll see. Um, if you are already a member, um, this is kind of the setup and that and all that. You'll, you'll see it's super easy. You'll just click whatever one you resonates more with you, and then that's it. Then you receive the success email, and that's that's about it. <laughs> you can do that now if you like. Yeah, you can do it now or after whatever you feel comfortable. Well, this will get you to the site if you want to look around and learn a little bit more about ACT or creative communities. It'll be a perfect time which on the site to check things out. I kind of give a little background on the award we have here. Uh, we of this award at the ECT conference in New Orleans last month. Um, and that is all because of you and all the great work that you guys do. So we really thank you for your We want to recognize those um, in attendance as well as those online. Um, we would be remiss if we did not show some uh, recognition for you being here. Jasmine's going to start with certificates for those who are in the room. If you want to come up, and maybe we'll get a picture of um, your senior certificate. Yeah, so we'll start off with Army Air Force Exchange Service. <laughs> Turn off because I was trying not to have it go off on us. We have CHI help. <laughs> Ready? Thank you. We have airline classics. Last, 
Okay, now, surprise, surprise, surprise. I have a very special gift for our food sponsor. Let's give our food sponsor. <laughs> But I want to recognize uh, Children's Hospital. Uh, not only are they a member of workplace communities, not only do they sponsor the food today for this event, but Aaron Pearson and uh, Children's Hospital, they also are very engaged in our uh, career placement to visit our classes and talk to them about jobs at their business. And they also provide uh, treats for our information sessions which we have for new students who just want to learn what kind of training programs do you guys have with their workforce? And that's have an information sessions for those before they select a class. And Children's also uh, sponsors uh, treats for that. Erin, if you want to come up, yes. I'd like to present you with this plaque that says Children's Hospital and Medical Center, Work Ready Community Sponsor, November 3rd, 2022. I'm taking this to We yeah. really appreciate all that you do for our, our program and for our students. Very Thank happy. You. Thank you, Corey. You're welcome. That's all we got. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for coming, everybody. If you're first here online, go to our online people. Thank you for being here, too. Wait for the yes. We have mm -hmm. certificates for you as well. We'll just send them through the mail. <laughs> Thank you. And I will tell you last night, Chad. Oh, no. Small, she wanted.